Let me ask you a question. How is your self-worth? Let me tell you something. This is, this is truth. This is fact. I've, I've been in ministry for 37 years and I've seen it happen and I see people around me. I see it in my life. Most of our problems come from a lack of self-worth. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Hi, my name is Bo Sanchez and welcome to Full Tank, your place of inspiration where I open the gospel for the next day, praying it will equip you today. I'm still here in Bohol enjoying the, the super conference of the Truly Rich Club. That's our theme, Catching Big Fish. We talked about investments, finance, business, entrepreneurship, and, and the, whole, the whole thing. And, and we kept on just giving strategy after strategy. But here's the truth. No matter how much you know up here, if there is no self-worth here, no matter what, what, what kind of information we, we download to them, if they don't have self-worth here, they won't be able to move forward um, in their business or in their job or in their investments. Or if they move forward, they will give up right away. Self-worth is so crucial. Self-esteem, how you look at yourself, you, the way you look at yourself, it's so crucial. Here's the gospel. Um, in Luke chapter 14, on the Sabbath, Jesus went to dine at the home of one of the leading Pharisees, and the people there were observing him carefully. Listen to this. He told a parable to those who had been invited, noticing how they were choosing the places of honor at the table. And so Jesus starts talking about, you know, th this, is, this, is, this is what people do at that time. Uh, most, most like they, they would, the guests would jockey for the best position. It's almost like the seats had, had a ranking, you know. And so if you're a guest, you want to be in rank number one seat, you know, that the most important seat, you want to be there. And, and they kind of like, you know, um, and Jesus was saying, no, that this is, and, and here's my reflection that, where does your honor come from? Where does your self-worth come from? From the, from the seat? From the rank of the places of the seats? Your self-worth can actually come from other people? The recognition that people will give you? That's where your self-worth comes That's where your self-esteem comes from? from? From the praise of other people? From their acknowledgement? From their affirmation? From their encouragement? Wow! What an unreliable source of self-worth. Face it, that's pretty fickle. That's a foundation that is so fickle. It changes like the wind. I'm, I'm giving you now God's word. I'm giving God's message to you. I pray that your self-worth is based on something more stronger, firm, and reliable where does that come from? I'll tell you a few stories. First story, woman comes up to me and says, Brother Bo, you hurt me. Huh? Why? She says, because when, when you came into the prayer meeting, you did not greet me. You know what? There are 200 people in the prayer meeting at that time. And, and I could not say, I'm so sorry, I did not see you. But then it happened again and again and again. Bro, Brother Bo, you hurt me, you did not smile. You know, you did not smile, you didn't greet me and so on. Her self-worth is based on what? My smile. Her, her self-esteem is based on what? My recognizing her. And, and she, I found out she was a very broken woman and her, and her parents, you know, did not love her. And, 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 and so anyway, ju just wanted to share that, that no, your self-worth cannot be. Second story. Uh, I visited a religious community and, and they were splitting up. There, there was so much bloody fights and conflicts. And I asked, where does it come from? You know, and they shared to me the history. Guess what? It came from leaders of that prayer group. When it was time to change leadership, when it was time to pass on the baton, they did not want to. <laughs> they, they held on to the baton. They held on to their title. No, no. Why? Their self-worth was based on their title, their position, their leadership role, and not on what? Something stronger and firmer and more reliable. My dear friend, your self-worth must come from the love of God. God loves you. God thinks He's crazy about you. He thinks you're wonderful and amazing and awesome. He gave Himself to you. You are so important to God. And my dear friends, that's where your self-worth and self-esteem should come from. And because you are secure, you don't need to jockey for the best seats in the party. You can let go of your title and say, I've come to serve. And, and well, it's time to, to give the baton, the, the role of leadership to someone else, gladly. I will still serve, 
even without a title. That attitude comes from a very secure person, not an insecure person, a very secure. And how do you become secure? Because you know that God loves you. You know that your worth comes from an unconditional love that is given to you by God. You know, when I give talks, my best talks were when I'm totally self-unconscious. <laughs> self -unconscious, never mind. <laughs> Basically, I'm not thinking of myself. I'm thinking of this audience. I'm thinking of how to serve them. I'm, I'm not thinking of what other people will say. If some people will not like my talk, that's okay. I'm here to serve. It comes from, from my, my self-worth. It comes from God. But if my talk is filled with, you know, I wonder if people will, will like my talk. Oh, no, you know. Ah, that'll be a horrible talk. My dear friend, I'm going to invite you to make that decision to base your self-worth on God's unconditional love for you. Parents, listen to me. The most important gift that you can give your children is self-worth. But how do you give them self-worth? Unconditional love. Love your children. Not based on whether they're a good boy or a good girl. Not whether they've got great report cards, you know. You know, some, some parents do that sadly, you know. I will love you. I will be happy if you give me a report card that's A or B plus. If not, you know, you're not a good boy, you're not a good girl, and, and, and then we, we, we snub them. Ugh, that, that, that gives me so much pain when I hear about that. No, love your kids unconditionally. And then you'll realize, you know, that, you're, that their self-worth will be strong. Yes, of course, challenge them to have good grades. But if their grades are not too good, Love them still and, 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 and celebrate who they are. Right now, you might be telling me, Brother Bo, my parents were not like that. They did not give me unconditional love. And, and that because of that, I'm broken and my self-worth is, is, is gone and, and I, have, I am very insecure as a person. I'm going to invite you now to allow God to love you, to allow God to embrace you this moment, right here, wherever you are. Let God embrace you. Can I pray for you? Lord Jesus. I pray for every person watching this video right now. Embrace them. Let them know about your unconditional love. Let them experience how madly in love you are. And, and how, how you, they're just so important to you. And, and that you think of them every day. And that you have written their name in the palm of your hand. They're, they're the apple of your eye. Lord God, love them. Now, this moment, in Jesus' name, bless them. Amen and amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Such a joy to be able to do this um, full tank. And um, I'm going to just show you this again. Um, hope to see you at the Kerygma Conference, uh, November 17 to 20, at SMX MOA and MOA Arena. Go to that website, kerygmaconference.com. Go, go there. And... Um, you know, find out more about it and grab your tickets because it is coming very, very soon. I want to see you there. I want, I want you to experience uh, the love of God, the unconditional lo love of God at the Kerygma Conference. I really pray that you join me and that we're going to have a great time. All right. So I'm going to see you. Uh, am I going to see you tomorrow? No, no, no. I'm going to see you on Monday. God bless you. Comments. Comments below. Yeah. Tell me, tell me, I, I read them, I, I pray for you. Bye.